Hey guys, this is Michael and welcome back to Let's Make Maps, episode number four. So, last time we worked on our, uh, we worked on our town map a little bit and got the river looking a little bit better. And this time, I think maybe the biggest uh, thing that stands out to me is the very, very flat looking wall here. So maybe we'll give that a go. And um, I think probably be able to get through the wall this session. So why don't we, um, why don't we get started on that? The, um, we've got a number of different layers here already. And uh, so we have, let me just turn them all off and we'll start from the bottom here. So here's our original wall, which is just a little line and then we've got a redone uh, wall base which is a wider uh, kind of situation here and then we've got a tower base which is the uh, the towers themselves and i don't know if you how well you can see that hopefully okay um, but what we'll do this time is uh, first of all i'm going to remove this wall old layer because we don't really need that anymore i'll throw these shadows back on so we can see and uh, let's zoom in here and take a look at the wall so it's pretty basic really there's nothing much going on with it um, and I don't plan on changing its overall outline so we're just going to use it as is I mean, ideally you might not want it to you know have a corner there right you might want to decide exactly how the thing is is it a curvy windy one that follows the terrain if so you want to draw it by hand if you do want it to be angular maybe there's a tower at the intersections and all that we're not going to worry about that this time around but think about it when you're thinking about your own maps what i do want for the wall is i want um, battlements crenellations whatever they're called around the tops of the towers and i would like um, them along the front of the walls here and then maybe we want some additional details, like maybe some stairs up or buildings near the wall or something like that. So we'll think about how we're going to do those things. And then we might want to do something special with the gates rather than have them just open like this. We might want to suggest some doors or maybe some superstructure over the top here that people can walk across on. Uh, we'll decide that as we go along. Actually, maybe we better decide that part right now. Do we want some sort of superstructure over the top of those things? I think we might, actually. Um, yeah, let's consider it. Uh, let's make a new layer below the tower, shadow, and wall. And let's just call this gate superstructure. And uh, what do these look like without the layer effects? Let's, um, let's turn off the layer effects so we can just see. Okay, so there's brown. I'm gonna grab this color here. And I've got gradient selected from another thing that I was doing the other night. And ideally what we'd like is to have something that stretches across um, from here to here in kind of a kind of a straight um, pattern so we're going to need to I think we can just draw a box by hand actually to be honest about it it doesn't have to be precise so hopefully you can see this I'm using the angular lasso tool to polygonal lasso tool is that what it's called to try to draw this and unfortunately there okay we're at the wrong color but uh, there we go so something like that and rather than drag that down here and and rotate it I'm going to do it by hand down here again you could copy it um, and that would ensure sort of uniformity but the thing is, is that when you rotate you end up kind of uh, messing up pixels, of course. I've got to look in here close so I can see when this thing goes to a circle. There we go. Uh, I will drag this one just a little bit, though. I'm going to select it, press the V key to get your little drag tool here. Oh, did I draw that on the wall base? I did not mean to do that. Did not mean to do that. Let's turn off the tower image here. I'm going to deselect 
And then I'm going to grab my lasso tool again, cut this out, and go above the gate superstructure, drop, paste it in. Oh, actually just paste it into the layer, that's nice. And let's turn these towers back on. There we go. Okay, let's do the same with this one. I, I did not mean to draw them on the wall base. So, we need to turn that off, right? Yeah, it's in the wall base. So, don't like that. Because I want to treat them differently than I treat the walls. So, come above gate superstructure, paste that in. Drag it to where I want it to be. Let's put the towers back on so we can see. Drag it to where I want it to be. And then I'm just going to merge it down into that gate superstructure layer. Okay. So I'm just going to copy the layer style from the walls onto the gate superstructure. And turn it on. Because they're off right now. There we go. Now, why don't we have, oh, because this is the tower shadow on ground, so our tower shadow on wall is not working here on this thing. That's fine. I'm just making that say tower shadow on ground. All right, so what's the first step here? Well, I think the first step might be the walls, um, making the sort of battlements on the walls. Now, let's start at the top. Let's do the tower, the tower top. So I'm going to copy the tower base, and I'm using Alt and clicking the layer and dragging it up just to make a copy of it. And I don't know what we're going to call this yet. I'm just going to call it something temporary. And we're going to leave the same layer style on it. I think what we're going to do is we're going to select it. And then we're going to go to Select, Modify, Contract. And let's contract it by four pixels, maybe? No, a little more than that. Filter, oh no, select, contract by, let's try six. How is that? I think that's probably pretty good. So I'm just going to delete out. And what that did was is it deleted the middle. If I turn off the tower base, you'll see, I'll just turn off everything, maybe. Yeah. Maybe not the shadows, because now you can't see. So what we've got is just a little ring around up here on each of these things. And you can't see it, of course, when you turn on the tower. But what we can do is we can make a shadow that will allow us to see it. So if we do a, um, I'm just going to call this tower battlement. And I'm going to just drag the layer down below. I'm copying Alt drag uh, down below, and we'll call this Tower Battlement Shadow. And I'm going to change what's going on here. I'm going to delete the layer style, clear the layer style, clear the layer style, <laughs> and then I'm going to uh, color it black. So. Right, there we go, it's deleted. And um, what's the best way to color this black? I guess we just select it all, make black our former our main color, and now, yeah, it doesn't do that. I didn't think it would. You know what we can do, actually? I'm just gonna create a new layer, and I'm gonna fill that. And that will make it a lot easier than going through and filling each of those individual pieces. So we'll do it that way. Tower, bat, shadow. There we go. Okay, so now we have a little black uh, layer here. What we're going to need to do is we're going to need to make it fuzzy. So filter, blur, Gaussian, and I don't know how much we were blurring before. I think I've probably changed my setting a little bit since we made our last thing, but let's keep it a little sharp. So maybe 6.6 .6 pixels. Right, and then what's our 
we're doing multiply at 75% there. So let's do the same thing here. Multiply 75% roughly. It doesn't have to be precise. And then we're going to kick it over a little bit. So if we take a look, let's remember that our light is coming from this direction. Maybe don't need to be zoomed in quite so much. So let's just make it go in that direction a little bit. Now this isn't a very tall thing. It's going to be at most, say, um, you know, just below the rib cage, maybe of the people that are up there. I mean, it could be higher, but <clears throat> I think I think that's you know the the general idea is that it's not super high, right? So let's do it that way. Now you do want to be careful that you don't edge it out beyond the uh, beyond where the layer actually starts. If you do, if you for instance needed this thin ring to be a shadow and you needed to it to be to imply that this was really tall, you might have to draw in some by hand, which you could do, certainly. So to get rid of you can see this dark circle that's now appeared here because we're overlapping these shadows. To get rid of that, we're just going to select the tower base, invert the selection, Control shift i and delete. And that leaves us with simply our little, uh, our little guy here. Now, that's looking a little dark to me, even though it's the same. Let me turn off our light. Yeah, interesting. Okay, now this still looks very flat. So why don't we do something else with it? What if we do just a little bit of bevel and emboss on our tower battlements? So let's see, we'll make these chisel hard. And uh, let's decrease the size down to maybe just even one, probably would work. I'm gonna turn down until it feels okay to me, the um, shadow and highlight. See, if we turn it up or down, you can see what happens. I'll turn up the highlight, turn down the shadow. I think that kind of gets it. Now, ideally, what you'd like here, if we were going to do a more zoomed in view, I would probably, rather than making this be just a, a solid ledge around the edge, I would probably cut in some crenellations and stuff like that. I'm not going to do that here, but if you were to do it, you have to figure out, okay, how am I going to select this thing? So what you might do is, um, well, what the hell, let's try it. But let's try it with something easier. I'm not gonna, I'm not, we're not going to try it with the towers. Let's try it with the wall when we get the wall done. So what we're going to do is essentially create the same thing on the wall. So I'm going to take the wall base. I'm going to drag it, uh, alt drag it up, and we're going to call this wall battlement. Wall bat, actually. And then we're going to have to do some mucking about with it, but essentially what I'm going to do is select the wall base and then I'm going to contract that selection in a similar way to what I did before. Six is fine. And then making sure I'm on the wall battlement layer, I'm going to hit the delete key. Now, we still have an interior uh, ledge over here. And do we want that or not? Well, I'm not sure, um, but it won't hurt us to leave it for now. Uh, it will be hard to put back later if we wanted to. Not that hard, but a little hard. So I'm gonna paste the layer style from the, um, from the tower battlement layer, uh, just so we can kind of see this now. And then I'm going to drag it down. Actually, I'm not going to drag it down. I'm going to remember what we did last time. I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to select, uh, control click on the thumbnail, the wall battlement to select it. Get that up. And then I'm going to press G for my paint tool. Fill in that layer. Deselect. We're going to filter Gaussian and just do what we did last time. 
And then we're going to try to remember which direction our light is coming from. And try to get this positioned in a way that looks kind of good to us. So we'll call this wall. Wall bat shadow. And then select the wall base while you've got the wall bat shadow selected, uh, layer selected, invert the selection, delete, and now we've removed the sort of dark line that was there. And then we need to make sure that we've got the same settings from up here. So I can just do copy layer settings, I think paste those onto there, and then we automatically go to multiply at 75%. So, let's see what that looks like now. A Little bit better than it did before. Uh, we can do a comparison on that just by doing this here. That's what we had at the start, and now an amazing 16 minutes into the video, uh, we have this. So, now there are some problems because we're not dealing with actual 3D objects here. It's very difficult to see this one here and it doesn't even look like it's there. We need something uh, to help us remember that that even exists. So what can we do? One of the things you can sometimes do, so I've put a stroke on it, right? Of course, that stroke is always three pixels wide, which is rather insane. And it is also um, at full opacity. If we take it, put it there, and then drop the opacity quite a lot, that can give us just a little bit more of a hint uh, that something is there. What is that? Is that the shadow? Okay, it is, yeah really should be it's not the tower shadow oh that's the combined shadow of everything right okay well we're gonna need to do some work with that shadow layer anyway so that's fine um, I'm going to copy the layer style now from I'm gonna copy the layer style from the wall battlement and I'm gonna put it back on top of the tower battlement as well and that'll give us just that little bit of outline up there. It is going to make things a little bit more cartoony, but not that much. And we're already cartoony enough that I don't think it hurts, and it certainly helps. Now you can kind of see that there's something there. It's minor, but it does give you a visual clue. Uh, well, another way you can avoid this, but there's always going to happen from some angle, is to get your light sort of just right so that most things that are in your scene are going to be kind of highlighted in an appropriate way. Okay, so um, that's pretty good, I guess, as a start. What about something like a better texture on here? Probably worth thinking about. Now, we could do a, um, we could do something with the actual texture, right? So we could click on the wall base here, take a look at the pattern overlay and see what we got. So we've chosen a concrete style texture for this. Um, what we could do is uh, consult our texture library and see do we have any kind of blocks in here? And we do, but maybe not ones that we would like, I don't know. I'm wondering what it would look like to throw this um, this old cobblestone street texture over the top of everything. If we, let me drag this in. Okay, we already have this loaded in as a texture. Well, let me go on top of everything, make a new layer, fill it, and then let's cover this with a pattern overlay. and set that pattern to be, if we can find it, hopefully the cobblestone street texture. Are you gonna tell us if we rolled over? Yeah, there we go. Cobblestone street texture, scale it down quite a lot. 
Maybe not that much. Maybe that much. Now, um, what I want to do with this is I'm going to right click on it. Right, so we can't like rasterize that layer or anything. So what we're going to do is if we want it to become set in stone and become an actual just sort of image, we are going to have to create a new layer below it and then merge down. So I'm going to call that cobble texture. And what I'm going to do is now, um, do I want to, let's, let's not destruct any of this. Let's not actually remove any of this. What I'm going to do is a layer mask. So I'm going to select the wall base and then holding shift, I'm going to select the um, tower base and then I'm also going to select the gate superstructure. So now I've got all of those things selected. I'm going to do a layer mask on it and now we've got it only on the tower. And notice of course that being uh, completely opaque removes every uh, everything that we already had there. Now if we add some new piece to the wall we can go back and add it to this mask and then it'll cover that and we won't have to redo everything. But what we can do is now turn down the opacity on that by quite a lot and get just a hint of the texture. See that? It's probably too big but it's not going to matter that much. So let's try some different layer styles and see what we get. Darken, multiply, color burn, linear burn, lighten, screen, color dodge, linear dodge, lighter color overlay. I'm thinking probably as usual I will like overlay. But let's see. Vivid light certainly brings out some of that texture. But again, since it's a little large, I don't want to bring it out too much, and I don't really feel like redoing the scaling of the thing. So maybe just overlay at 25%. And let's zoom back out and have a look at what, it, what see what it looks like. So now we've got a little bit of variation in there. We're going to supplement that a little bit more with, um, I've got some grunge textures in here, some just general, um, general things that I've used in the past. These were free things that I found on the internet somewhere. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot provide a link for these particular textures, but if you search for grunge texture, believe me, you will find a ton of them. So I'm going to just select all, copy, and I'm going to paste this on top here. Now, I'm going to be using this texture a lot, actually, um, to do things. <laughs> to do lots of things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to alt drag it down to the bottom here and I'm going to call this my grunge base. Probably use that quite a bit but for now uh, on this when I'm, whoop, no, let's zoom out. Yeah I didn't think so. We want to zoom this up. Actually okay let me delete this layer Go down to our grunge base layer. I'm just going to drag it up so I can see the thing. And then I'm going to transform it. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees so that it covers. Well, I guess it doesn't quite cover. Oh, right. We're using a square texture, aren't we? That's fine. Uh, okay, I'm going to scale it up then. Just scale it up so it covers the whole scene. And then I'm going to drag it back down here. And then I'm going to copy it, alt drag it back up here and now we can use it. So essentially I'm going to take this same layer here, uh, the same data that's in this layer mask with a cobble texture, and I'm going to apply a mask here. All right, and now we're going to do some layer magic with this thing. Now honestly I have found that the grunge texture thing is your buddy. This is where you're going to this is where you're going to make it kind of come together a lot. And we got it on 100% right now, but we don't really want it on 100%. More like you know, like a 20ish percent kind of thing. So here's the difference. Turn it off, turn it on. It it adds a subtle bit of texture. There's stuff going on in here that your eyes are picking up on. 
and it makes it just subtly different from everything else. I generally put a grunge layer on top of every uh, man-made object just to kind of give it a, uh, a little bit of a worn look so it doesn't look shiny and new. So let's just play with layer styles though real quick and see if there's anything else we'd rather set on rather than multiply. I do like things that bring out existing color. Linear dodge, lighter color, overlay of course, looks pretty good. Soft light looks good. Hard light, vivid light, kind of makes it look like sandstone, which I don't think I really want. Hard mix, difference, yeah. Usually don't get down into those except for kind of special effects. I'm actually thinking I like soft light in this particular case. Yeah, I think I do. I actually like soft light. Okay. Um, let's roll with that. Let's, let's roll with soft light for now. And we need to do something to this gate superstructure. And I think what I'm going to do with the gate superstructure is I'm going to copy the layer style on one of the battlements and not the right layer. I'm going to paste that layer style onto the gate superstructure. I'm not sure what that is, you know, and maybe we'll have to redo that. I mean, it, it ideally should be maybe some kind of walkway but over the top of a gate or something like that but it's kind of hard to yeah, really get that across to make that read to the viewer so first of all we have to decide what it is and then we have to sell it to the reader and uh, the, the viewer of the thing and I'm not entirely sure how to do that at the moment so let's I'm gonna punt on the gate superstructure in fact do I leave it off entirely no let's don't let's assume that it is a uh, that it is an object that blocks light up to you know say at least the height of the wall if not maybe a little more I think that's pretty reasonable if we assume there's a walkway right that passes through these towers and through these as well and then goes across here I think that's probably a pretty good start okay so now what we need to do is redo this sh this shadow here on the ground. We've already got the base, um, but it's already blurred, and I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide it for now. I'm going to create a new layer that we're going to use for our shadow on the ground. And I'm going to do much the same as we did to create that one. I'm going to click the wall base. I'm going to click the wall or the tower base. Oops, sorry. Shift click. Okay, whoops. Let's delete. <laughs> Deselect. I'm going to control click the uh, the thumbnail for the wall base. I'm going to control click the thumbnail for the tower base. And we've added those things. And I'm going to go ahead and, call it, and click the gate superstructure as well. Now we've got everything that's a component of the wall uh, as it stands selected. So I'm going to fill that with black. And I'm going to move it in the direction of our light. Maybe, let's turn the light back on here. Yeah, maybe something like that. I notice this is in a far different place than we were before, and I think that's reasonable. I was, I must have pushed it in the wrong direction. Maybe I wasn't paying attention to the light source when we did that, or maybe I hadn't even identified the light source properly when we were originally doing that. I might have just been talking about how to do it. Um... We'll just call that the ground shadow. Now we're going to need to uh, to blur it and reduce its opacity and stuff, but let's take care of some problems first. And those problems are these. So right here, if we look at the difference, we've got the little notch here, right, where nothing is happening. And if we think about this, right, how reasonable is it that this tower that we're seeing directly from the ground, so there is a a uh, an opaque surface from this point where my cursor is all the way to the ground. So therefore the sun should be being blocked along this line. 
If the sun's coming in along this line, it ought to be blocked along this line. So we're going to have to do that by hand. And the best way to do that, you can certainly draw it in if you want. Uh, draw it in by hand. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the um, I'm going to use the angular lasso tool, polygonal lasso tool, whatever it's called. And I'm just going to paint in some little corners here. And we're going to do it back here as well. This takes a bit of fiddling, but it's not too bad. We don't really care. Um, we might not be fully covering whatever's under the towers there. It doesn't really matter that much because it's under the towers. It might be easier to do with a paintbrush, but you know, I'm not uh, always that precise with a paintbrush, so if I can, I'd prefer to use tools that let me have a definite selection. And I'm just going to scroll around to all of these and have a look at them. And then we are going to be doing some paintbrush tool over here, but we'll come back to that in a minute. Now here, probably close enough, but we do get a little bit of a turn in right here, which maybe isn't entirely desirable. Uh, that might be more of a, we'll need a paintbrush to fix this thing, but let's try it. No, that's probably okay. It's subtle, but... These trees look absolutely horrid up close. <clears throat> we will fix it, don't worry. Okay, we got some funny business going on here that'll probably need to get fixed. I'm not sure what layer that lives on. All right, <laughs> sorry, this is gonna take a while. This is how it goes. I could pause the video um, and do this off camera, but uh, who knows what I might discover in the meantime. And rather than make a jerky video, I figure I'll show you guys the whole thing. They're gonna be a little longer, but um, I'm, I'm assuming that anybody who's watching these videos is very interested in the process. And if that's an incorrect assumption, you feel free to correct me in the comments. So, and say, hey, dude, stop that. Just show us how to do it and then go do the rest of it. If that's what you want, let me know. If not, I'll keep doing it this way. All right, I think we're, uh, I think we're done. Let's zoom out and take an overall view of the thing and see. I think you can probably already see that that's a lot better. Um, me too. Fix this one though. I did, somehow missed it. And again, because we do destructive processing on some of this by blurring it and all that, um, it's it's kind of hard to go back and fix later. So just you know, double check, make sure you got everything the way you want it to be before we do any kind of processing to it. All right, now it's time for a little bit of paintbrush work around the banks here. So I'm going to punt on that one for now because there's a, a, some vagaries about what's going on there. But I'm going to get my tablet again, Wacom into a 5 Pen and Touch, I think is what it's called. What is it called? Into a 5 Touch Pen Tablet Medium. But I have the touch features disabled just because I just... I don't really care for them, to be honest. Okay, I've got a brush here, and I'm going to zoom in a bit more so I can see what's up over here a little bit. Now, if you think about this wall, um, let me get something you guys can probably see. If we think about this wall here, um, this shadow being straight like this is coming right off the edge of the wall and we're implying that then that the thing that it's falling on is a flat plane which is not the case um, it gets deeper as we approach the river is flat across the river and then gets less deep up here so ideally 
um, we're going to want the shadow to fall further along the bank. Um, is that right? Further along the bank? Yes, we're going to want the shadow to fall further along the bank um, as we come to it. Not a great deal, but a little bit. So and now I have to check my own uh, my own assumptions on that. I think that's correct, right? So I'm going to take my uh, my paintbrush here, and I'm going to make it pretty small, actually. And I'm just going to, yep, I'm on the right layer. If you don't trust yourself, do this on another layer. And I'm just going to paint across here a little bit, not much. Always think of the angle of your light and the shape of the objects that you're trying to create a shadow for. And try to imagine what is going on. Now, if you want, you can actually draw a little sketch, and I've done this before, of, uh, of things. So, for instance, we could come up here, put in, drop in a layer, and let me make a, a color that we can see. And... Uh, pin size that we can see. So we could do something like this if we wanted to. I mean, it doesn't need to be quite that large. We could say, okay, well, here's our wall, All right? And the light is coming from here. So, and then our river bank is like, um, it's gonna be hard to do because of the angle I've chosen here, right? But if we were to say that the river bank was kind of yeah, I have drawn this in a weird way that won't let us work with it. But but let's just say we were trying to figure out, okay, how does the shadow fall across here? We can we can trace these points down. All all lines from the sun are in effect parallel to our point of view. Um, so we can look at this and figure out where the shadow goes. So draw yourself a diagram if you need to. It might be better if we drew it kind of a little bit of a 3D thing. You know, so here's our wall. I know I'm digressing, but maybe this will help somebody. Here's our wall in space. Over here is our, uh, our river bank, like this. And we need to draw lines off of it to the surface. And where is that hitting? I'm not drawing those parallel, am I? But you get the idea, I think, probably. And if not, just ignore it because I might be rambling. Right, but in any case, I think that's probably a little better than we had it. A little bit. I still have my doubts, but we'll, we'll roll with it. And this one over here, I think we can probably just get away with maybe enhancing the shadow just along this little bank here. Let's get back on ground shadows and change our color back to black. I think if we just pop it down here like this, that's probably okay. Do we need to maybe have the wall? I don't know. I don't think we do, actually. I think it needs to fade out right around here. This one is probably okay. It's kind of too close to call because it's a, it's a, it's a tangent shadow. I mean, it's barely touching because we're only getting shadow from this part of the wall. This part of the wall is not casting any shadow on, on the ground that we can see. So we need to be thinking about where is this? Where, what point on this shadow is the right point on the wall, right? And it's something like this. So really this furthest point that can project a shadow is falling right here on the corner of the riverbank probably. So we don't need to take it out onto the water at all. All right. Enough of that. Let's blur this. Gaussian blur. I'm going to give it a little bit larger blur than we gave on top of the wall because it's a little bit further away from the object that's casting the shadow. Whether that's physically accurate or not, I honestly don't know, but it works good for me, so I'm going to do that. I'm also going to make it a little bit lighter than the one on top, just by a couple of points. I did 73 there. You can come back and fine-tune that later if you want. But um, I'm not going to go much further than this because we're at 40 minutes already. And um, But anyway, I just wanted to kind of get the wall looking a little better. Next time we'll try to figure out what else needs our attention. 
maybe trees, honestly. I mean, buildings are kind of a reasonable placeholder, but these trees are god-awful ugly. Uh, they're just a bunch of circles. They don't have any definition. The layer style doesn't have any work done to it. But uh, we can do that. Now, a uh, final note on this wall thing. I really took a shortcut with the applying a texture to it. If you want to do this right, you go get yourself a texture, get it to the right scale, and bring it in here and rotate it into posi rotate it into position in little bits. Trim it up to fit your wall. Do the same for here. Make sure it's rotated the right way around. Here too, work out something for the transition. For each of the towers, do the same thing. You can use different textures. Um, and yeah, Bob's your uncle, you end up with a much, much nicer looking wall that nobody will ever really see when it gets printed or, or something in a small format um, that you can only really see if you zoom in on a full res version of the map to take a look at. But again, um, all of that stuff contributes to what your eye is seeing. Right now, we're seeing a texture that isn't aligned with walls and it doesn't look quite right to our brains. It doesn't look right to me. I wish it looked better, but I didn't really have time to go and do that. We might do it just, we will do it in a later episode so that we can see the details. We will also do what I talked about, about putting in some like crenellations on these battlements here. I don't know if I'm using the right words. I have no idea. I'm not a castle terminologist, but um, it will make a huge difference. It really will in appearance, uh, but it takes a little bit more work and it is more valuable on a larger scale. So if you are doing a, an encounter map, for instance, on a, on a wall, you definitely want to do that. And you want to put more details besides, I mean, light coming through arrow slits even, right? Because that will help paint a better picture of what it is you're trying to convey to the viewer. But for now, uh, I think this will stand for our fairly simple town. And uh, we'll leave it there, and I will join you guys. I hope you guys will join me for the next episode. And thank you very much for uh, for taking an interest in this. Bye.